For a relative with stroke, are you usually bothered about how stroke occurs and how to handle stroke? Today on the TDJ show, we are going to share some vital information about stroke, how it occurs and how you can handle it. So what is stroke? Stroke is actually an abnormality of the brain. It is a loss of function of the brain due to a disruption in the blood vessel that supplies the area of the brain. So like just like any part of the body, we have blood vessels carrying blood to all parts of the body. Now, if we have an interruption to the flow of the blood vessels that feed the brain, then the brain starts losing its function. But the thing about the brain is, when you lose a particular function, it's very difficult to regain it or get it back. So then you realize that the person starts showing signs of the damage to that brain. So stroke is just a disease of the brain due to an interruption in the blood flow to the brain. Now, how does it occur? So this interruption can be in two different forms. It can be as a result of a blockage. That means that the vessel, that is the, either the artery or whatever thing that is feeding the brain is blocked or is burst or ruptures. So based on that, we have two main categories of stroke. We have the hemorrhagic stroke and the ischemic stroke. So when we talk about ischemic stroke, that means that the vessel is blocked. When we talk about hemorrhagic stroke, it means that the vessel has been disrupted or it has burst. We have a third one called a TIA, transient ischemic attack. That one, you, it's like an ischemic stroke, but then it reverses. So if you have something like a stroke happening to somebody, and then within 24 hours, the person regains all its functions, that is a transient ischemic attack. So usually it happens whereby something blocks the pathway for a brief moment, so then it's the brain starts losing oxygen and is dying off. So the person starts showing signs of the stroke, and then it, the flow, you know, resumes again like the clot or whatever thing that blocks it is dislodged. So it starts having blood again. So then the functions returns back to normal. That is what we call a TIA. Most of the time, about 10 to 15% of them might have a stroke in three months or a third of them will have a stroke in about a year. But not all of them will end up with stroke, especially if it is managed very well. So what are the risk factors of stroke? What puts someone at risk of stroke? If you have it, it doesn't mean you are going to have it definitely, but it means that you are at risk of having stroke if you don't handle it very well. Now, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol level is one of the three major things. If you have a cardiac condition, like an arrhythmia, all sorts of, especially atrial fibrillation, I don't want to be very technical, but then if you have a condition of your heart, it puts you at risk of having it. Having migraines, puts you at risk. If you have carotid stenosis, the carotid is the vessel, a big vessel in your neck that feeds the brain. If there is narrowing of that, it puts you at risk of having a stroke. We have something that we call homocysteinemia. All these things are things that put somebody at risk of smoke and lifestyle changes. So when you are drinking too much, you're smoking, you live in a very sedentary lifestyle, it puts you at risk of having stroke. Now, how do you know that somebody actually has stroke? So let's say you are talking with somebody, you are conversing with somebody, and all of a sudden the person's speech changes. The person shows signs of confusion or the person doesn't really understand what you were saying or understand but cannot really say it. It's a sign that the person can be having a stroke. Sometimes their face changes, it droops, it tilts. Or there's weakness in one part of the body. Sometimes they actually lose, they can actually lose consciousness. They can fall and actually lose consciousness. Some of them become incontinent, like they fall, they wee wee or poo poo on them. So some, some have seizures when it happens. But the commonness, we actually use, have an acronym that we call FAST. The F stands for face. So you realize that their face droops or it tilts, it's not even. Then the arm, so there's an arm weakness. So the arm becomes weak, so then it droops. So it tilts because one has become weaker than the other. And then the speech, it becomes slurred. And the T, T stands for time. That means that you don't have time to waste. Call your 911 or whichever emergency line you need to call based on where you are. Because when it comes to stroke, time is brain because the more time you spend the more brain function you lose so you have to hurry up and call or go to your doctor and then you know get something done about it 
So one thing you can know to confirm whether the person is having stroke, you can ask the person a question, tell the person to say something, a complete sentence. If the person has a stroke, most likely the person will not be able to complete the sentence. You can ask the person to raise both hands. You realize that one hand will be able to, the person will be able to raise one and the other one, there will be weakness. The person won't be able to raise it very well. You can ask the person to, you know, stick the tongue out or smile. You realize that there's a symmetry or like it's tilted to one side. Those are some of the things that you can quickly do to realize that your loved one is having a stroke so that you rush the person to the nearest hospital. So when you rush the person, what will be done? Usually we check the blood pressure, the, you know, the glucose level and all that because we need to know what is happening. If the blood pressure, we would want to, you know, start reducing it bit by bit. You want to know exactly what happens. But the most cardinal thing about stroke is a CT scan. As I said, we have the one where the vessel is blocked and the one where the vessel has ruptured. They are opposite of each other. So if you don't know exactly which one is happening and you choose, you treat and it is the other one, you're actually going to worsen it. So when you go to the hospital, the first thing is a CT scan so that the doctor will get to know the kind of stroke the person is having so that we can treat almost immediately. Now, when we know that it is, it's a stroke, we know the kind of stroke, then we can start treating. Then we we'll look for the other things that is associated with the pest that caused it, like the blood pressure, the sugar level, the cholesterol level, and all those things, so that we can deal with them. Now, one thing I want to know, I want you to know is that when it comes to stroke, time is of essence. When you're able to reach there early, and then we start management early, we can save a lot of brain function. I mean, there are a lot of technologies coming up whereby when you get there early, we can actually give medication to melt the clot or to remove it surgically, but it's all about time. When you cross that time, we cannot do it for you. Now, the doctors will do all that they are supposed to do to you know, handle the underlying condition and handle the stroke as well. But then, how do we help the person? We will do our bit, but if the brain function is lost, the best way to help the person is about rehabilitation. So physiotherapy is very important. Physio, if the person cannot talk, you need speech therapy. If the person is not working, you need physiotherapy. We need support groups, people, loved ones to come around the person, to engage the person, to encourage the person. Those things are very, very important. Those are the most effective ways to help get your person back. So we need lots of support group, family members. We need love, care, and rehabilitation for the patient. And then you have to follow up with your doctors as they treat the underlying condition. Now, how do you prevent stroke? You can only prevent stroke by avoiding or managing your risk. So if you are diabetic, make sure you have perfect sugar control, hypertensive, control your blood pressure. If you are obese, try and lose a bit of weight. If your cholesterol level is high, you'll be on some medication to help you out your diet. You manage all your other things that we discussed in the risk factors in order to reduce your risk of having a stroke. Now, if you have it, like I said, it doesn't mean that you will definitely get it. But then if you handle your risk factors well, you can avoid it. And look out for other people. If somebody is having a stroke, learn these things so that you can identify it and move the person quickly. It is an emergency and time is brain. Thank you very much for listening to us. This is the TDJ Show. Don't forget to follow us, or to subscribe, to comment, to share, and to like. Thank you very much.